Hello and welcome to my channel, thank you for joining me today. In today's video we're going to be talking about the very tricky subject of pricing your artworks. This was a video I was asked to do a couple of weeks ago in the comments underneath one of my previous videos and it's a very, like I say, tricky subject because it's so subjective. Everybody has different ideas about how you should price your artworks and if you Google it you'll get all sorts of different theories on how you should do it. One thing that you'll find is some people say that you should do it by however many square inches your painting is. I don't do that at all. I never have done. I think it's a very strange way of looking at things because you could have a very small artwork that has taken considerably more time than something larger depending on the style and it's really much more about perceived value what somebody's well willing to pay for your piece of artwork rather than the intrinsic value of the size of it, the frame etc. Other people take into account the materials and of course you've got to do that, you've got to cover your overheads and work it out that way. Um, I have something that I always stick to that I'll tell you a bit more about later on in the video but I just wanted to talk firstly really about this perceived value. Years ago I had a retail business and I remember another friend who'd been in retail for years telling me that if something's not selling put the price up. If you put your artwork and your prices too low people are going to perceive it as being cheap and not being worth paying for. If you put your prices up a little bit they're going to perceive that value. It's all a bit of psychology really. It's in the same way as we um, price things 9 99 in the shops with that 99 pence to make it look a little bit less than it is. In the same way, if you undervalue your work and you make it too cheap, then people aren't going to value it in the same way. And if you undervalue yourself, how can you expect a customer or a potential art collector to value you as well? The person that asked the question about me doing this video today was, is just in the process of starting out trying to sell the work for the first time and really that's when you need to be sort of testing the water and talking to people a lot, talk to other artists, see what they're doing so I would suggest that you get to plenty of art fairs, craft markets and that kind of thing with your work and I've often sat in craft markets where you've been there all day and hardly sold a thing and it's very disheartening and I couldn't completely understand that how disheartening it is when you don't sell anything and you spent X amount of money for the stand. And I'll be sat next to other people who'll, who'll, who'll sit there sort of complaining that they haven't made their stall money back. Um, and this is something you come across quite a lot and I'm sure if you've done fairs yourself you might even have said that yourself. But I always regard that stall money as marketing. A very big percentage of big businesses budget goes towards marketing and I think we need to think more as artists about marketing and about putting that money aside so whenever I go to a craft fair or an art fair and I pay for that stand before I've gone that money is already counted in my marketing I don't sit there all day thinking I've got to make that money back because it may come back years down the line it may come back months down the line You've got to think about it as getting yourself out there, getting your work known, but also networking and talking to other artists and seeing what works for them. So use those opportunities to talk to people. And if you sit there all day and you don't sell anything, but you get lots of lovely comments from people, use that as a positive and go away and work with that. Because don't forget that art is very, very subjective. So most of the people that are coming past your stall, your artwork might not be to their taste. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your artwork. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with their taste, although you might question that. It just means that we can't appeal to everybody all of the time. And then you'll get quite a few people who walk past and love your work. But that doesn't necessarily mean they've actually got space for it at the moment to buy it, to want to buy it and hang it in their house. It doesn't actually mean that they're an art collector and it doesn't mean that they've not got the budget to make that purchase at that time. So you've got to be really lucky if you've got somebody passing by who's in the frame of mind to be buying an artwork, likes your artwork and has got the money to buy it. So think of it in those terms, your advertising, your marketing, you're not sitting there worrying about whether you've sold anything or not. And like I said, that marketing money might come back to you later on. You might have had people past who said they've liked your work but not bought anything and then six months later they might ring you up and ask you to do a commission. So always make sure you've got lots of business cards, always make sure people can contact you very easily, uh, make sure you've got a website that's easy to remember and that you've got social media links that people can find you easily on. 
you don't want a customer thinking, oh, who's that person I saw? I love their work. I'd like them to do a commission, but I can't remember the name. I haven't got a card, etc. So make sure people can contact you in the future because it might be a year or two later when they suddenly think, ah, I'm changing um, this room or I'm going to a wedding and I need a gift and I would like that artist to make me something for that. So just make sure that when you're doing these things, people can contact you. So that's slightly different to what we're talking about with the price, actual pricing of your work, but it's relevant. Um, don't, because the temptation is when you're at these events and things aren't selling, you think, oh, my prices are too high. If I lower them, they'll sell. Don't do that. Another piece of um, advice I was given years ago by another artist when I was at one of these fairs was I was taking my originals um, and of course, when you're putting them in and out of the car and hanging them up and things, they end up getting scuffed and the frames maybe get damaged over time if you do that repeatedly. And this particular artist said, I never ever take originals to craft fairs and things. She leaves them at home and she just takes a print. And the reason for that was because she said, in her words, your originals will always sell eventually. And at the time I thought, well that's silly, I want people to see my work, how can they buy it if they don't see it, etc. But actually she was right. You know, you can have something that you think is never going to sell and you've had it for three or four or five years and then all of a sudden somebody sees it and they decide that's for them and they will buy it. So I do actually still take small originals because I do think it's important to get your work out there. But I do think that was an interesting piece of advice um, that actually has proven to be true in some ways. So now coming back onto the pricing. One thing that you really must do is keep your pricing consistent. It's no good having your work um, at home in your studio at one price, online at another price and in a gallery somewhere else at another price. It has to be the same price throughout. If I sell something direct myself, obviously I'm not giving commission to a gallery on that, but I still, if I've got that similar work, the same size, in a gallery it's still at the same price and I just have to take it on the chin that I'm giving that commission away to the gallery for them selling it and that's they've got overheads as well and you've got to appreciate that but it doesn't look good to customers and to collectors if you have things in different places at different prices and it's not consistent you must have that consistency otherwise it looks unprofessional in my opinion and likewise I don't really give a discount if someone asks for it because why if one person is happy to pay X amount of money for a painting and then another person comes along and says well I don't actually want to pay that much I want to pay 50% less than they've just paid for it like, no you can't that person was willing to pay that amount of money it was so they saw the value in that and I'm going to hang on to that painting until somebody else comes along I'm not going to give discount so that comes back to don't undersell yourself and it also and it also comes back to that thing of you will sell it eventually. So, you know, they're just being cheeky asking for discount. And you do get that a lot. And it can be a bit of an irritant because people don't go into a shop, uh, Marks and Spencers or wherever, and say, can I have a discount on this? It's the price that it is on the ticket. Um, so they can't because they know that you're the one that's selling it and that you've done it yourself, they will ask for discount. And just don't just stick to your guns on that is what I would say. Um, but again, that's entirely up to you. I'm only giving you my opinions today. You decide how to work best for yourself. Another piece of advice I picked up, I think this may have been off a YouTube video years ago, was to add a note every decade. Now that sounds very nice and it would be very nice, as, uh, <laughs> but I'm not sure that that's doable. So if you set off at £10 a decade later, you're at £100 a decade later, you're at £1,000 for a painting. Um, I suppose in a way that might be doable, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, but that was just, you know, one little bit of advice I thought I'd pass on to you. So the way I would suggest for you as a complete beginner selling your very first paintings, this was, I think, the best piece of advice I've ever had, was from the lady that frames my paintings. And she said, never sell anything for less than three times the cost of the framing. Now your framing costs will vary depending on the type of frame you choose and whether you do your own framing or you pay for a framer to do it. Personally I like to pay for a framer to do it and I've got, I know that they've made a good job of it and they're very professional. But the size, the amount of glass makes a big difference to the cost of your framing. I can pay anywhere between £16 for very small things. That's the very least I ever pay for framing, up to about £60. Uh, something this kind of size will cost you between 30 and 50 pounds to have framed so therefore 
anything this size, you don't want to charge less than, say this costs £50 to frame, you mustn't be selling it for less than £150 according to this simple rule. And I think as a beginner, if you're wanting to know how to price your artwork, that is a really good one to go by. Times your framing cost by three and don't sell it for less than that. That doesn't mean you can't sell it for more than that if you want to put your prices up, but don't sell it for any less than that. So as far as my paintings are concerned, that's where I start with that three times the framing thing. And then I think about what I've sold in the past. So I would never go lower um, and sell something of a similar size for less than I've sold it in the past. And I keep nudging those prices higher every year. And that's really as much as I can help you because I still worry about it. I still don't know. I still um and ah about the prices that I'm putting on. So really, if somebody's been willing to pay that amount in the past, then I think, well, I shouldn't then go below that. Um, but I still wonder. I still don't know. I haven't priced this painting yet because it's one of the biggest ones I've done. I haven't done anything on this scale before. It took me a little while to do it. I'm not sure how cheeky to be and how high to put the price on that. But at the same time, I don't want to do it too low when I've put all that work into it. So I don't know. Um, so I hope that helps. It was a bit um, muddled there. But I wouldn't go with a square inch thing. That's it. Again, that's up to you if you want to do that. Make sure you are covering your costs. Obviously, something like this, there's an awful lot of paint there. Your canvas costs a lot of money. And again, you could work that into your framing thing. So I've not got this framed, but I still wouldn't want to sell it for less than three times the cost. I mean, that's actually going to end up a lot more than that, I would say. But yeah, don't undersell yourself. That's my main thing out of this video is to not put your prices too low not undervalue yourself. I had a college teacher actually once said to me, don't forget you've paid for this college course to learn these skills and many of you will have paid for lessons, um, for tuition, to learn how to paint. Now you want to come to the point where you want to sell your work, you need to recoup that money, you need to regard that as an investment so that needs to be put into your work as well. So keep your prices that little bit higher. Don't undervalue yourself. And uh, it gives you a bit more pride in your work as well. I'd rather wait, wait a while to sell your work than to have it too cheap. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. It's very, very subjective. So you might want to discuss it further in the comments below and let me know what you think, but also let each other know what you think. You might have some tips that I haven't mentioned that you go by. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll be back again with you soon. Bye for now.